Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this is uh, Shackleton again. He's getting lots of airtime uh, today. So, in the last uh, few videos, I've been talking about the very important numbers of the coronavirus on... It's not the number of diagnosed cases that's really important. It's the number of true cases. And there's methods that are given... Um, if you go to those links um, and you know and and look and read the articles thoroughly and look at some of the links to see how to calculate the number of true cases based on the number of diagnosed cases, uh, it's very important for to look at this for all countries to to know that the you know basically see what the measures are. Basically, social distance and locking down countries is vital, and the sooner, the better. Um, in terms of the outcome. So, but now I'm going to talk about something different about how soap absolutely annihilates the coronavirus. Okay, uh, people are kind of fixated on these hand sanitizers, you know, with at least 60% alcohol, selling them out, you know, <laughs> causing places to com be completely sold out, you know, having runs on them as well as on face masks and things. Soap absolutely annihilates the coronavirus. You're not just washing viruses down the drain when you wash your hands with soap. It destroys the virus. So a chemistry professor explains it, and I'll try to talk about it. So, you know, as COVID-19 surges to more than 1,000, fear sweeps the country in the U.S., one consumer product critical to our great national battle is to, fl to flatten the curve or slow the epidemic is soap. Humble, ancient, cheap, effective soap. Okay, of course, the respiratory viruses like the flu, the common cold, the novel coronavirus can be spread via our hands. If someone's sick, the hand can touch some mucus and viral particles will stick to the hand. If someone's well, the hands act like stippy, sticky traps for viruses. We can pick up droplets that contain the virus. They'll stay on our hands, enter our bodies if we touch our hands to our faces. So our hands are the front lines in the war against the COVID-19. CDC recommends washing hands with soap and water as a top way to clean our hands. If soap and water are not available, using a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol can help. But they prioritize soap. Yet news reports have people stocking up and hoarding sanitizer. You know, the Atlantic reported a man who sold a bottle of Purell on eBay for 138 bucks. Hand sanitizer containing over 60% alcohol works well, and it's a good option if you're not near a sink. Okay? You know, it might feel like sanitizer is a modern-day, scientific, more clinical upgrade to soap, but soap, liquid, solid, honeysuckle-scented, anything is crazy, much crazy, badass, much, much better, even more routinely effective than hand sanitizer. Okay, this is because you're not just wiping viruses off your hands with soap and sending them down the drain. You're actually annihilating the viruses, rendering them harmless. Soap's like a demolition team breaking down a building and taking all the bricks away, says this chemistry professor who posted a viral thread on the wonders of soap. So soap, it's got... Um, Amp amphiphiles. These are molecules that have a dual nature. They're, they're polar molecules. One end of the molecule is attracted to water, called the hydrophilic end, and it's repelled by fats and proteins. The other end of the molecule is attracted to fats, so it doesn't like water, so it's hydrophobic. Okay? So, these, the nature of these molecules makes it effective. Okay, so if you pour olive oil into water, then it forms a globule. And then if you put in salt, salt, if you put in soap, the molecules go to the surface of the oil drop. The, here, here's an, an expanded view of a molecule. The water-loving side is on the outside next to the water. The, the um, water-hating side or hydrophobic side, hydrophilic, water liking, hydrophobic, water disliking is on the inside. And then the water's pulling this apart, so it basically pulls apart the 
membrane of the virus and exposes the insides and the virus is as annihilated. So this is it showing attacking a splotch of grease. Now coronavirus are, are a bit like oil. They, they're genetic information encoded by RNA surrounded by a coat of fat and protein. So, so think of them as nano-sized grease balls. Now soap loves to annihilate it. It just pulls it apart. There's a 25-part thread by this guy, Pally Thorderson, on how, why soap works so well on destroying the coronaviruses. So it just pulls it apart. Okay, um, the side of the soap, the hydrophobic side, is attracted to fat repelled by water. It buries into the virus's fat and protein shell. But the chemical bond holding the virus together aren't very strong, so this intrusion is enough to break the virus's coat. It, the water-loving side, the hydrophilic side, is attracted out to the water, so it basically pulls the virus apart makes it soluble in water and it disintegrates and then it gets flushed down the drain. Now it takes time for this to happen. So you need at least 20 seconds to wash your hand. This isn't just made up to get so that you get a thorough washing. This gives the little molecules time to annihilate the virus. You know, also your skin is wrinkly. It takes time for soap to penetrate into all the tiny folds and demolish the viruses. So the, but then the soap needs a few moments to do its chemical magic, its chemical work. You need a bit of time for all the soap to interact back and forth with the virus particle. 20 seconds should do the trick just fine. Okay, so soap works wonderfully. You need to, you need it, you need to do it for the 20 seconds. It rips apart and destroys any viruses. Now hand sanitizer has alcohol, the main ingredient. If it doesn't, it's useless you need at least 60%. These sanitizers work in a similar way. If the concentration of alcohol is high enough, 60%, the al alcohol molecules are like these soap molecules, the amphiphiles. But you need a high concentration of alcohol to get the same effect. Things in Lysol, these different quaternary ammonia and compounds, the main ingredient in Lysol, it kills viruses too, but can be a bit harsher on the skin. So CDC recommends 60% alcohol. You know, you ha if, if sanitizers and wipes that don't meet this standard are not recommended, uh, but soap doesn't fail as easily. It's really, you don't need antibacterial soap, you just need plain soap, okay? So let's all get excited about washing our hands more. Soap and water, counting to 20, and imagine a battle being waged on the nanoscale in the teeny tiny folds of your skin. The soap's charging in, sticking to viruses, as well as dirt and other grease, tearing them apart in brutal, heroic fashion. It's almost like the Avengers, but better because it's real. Because it can stop the spread of this outbreak. Okay, so good old fashioned soap. Who would have who guessed? So. Go ahead and, and buy a bunch of bars, you know. I picked up, uh, I went to a local store and, uh, you know, picked up, uh, you know, three packets. I got 18 bars of soap. It was about 15 bucks Canadian, okay? There was loads and loads and loads, you know, just, you know, buy what you think you'll be using over the next uh, month or two, you know, not, not hoarding, of course. So, so there we are. You know, our world is changing. We're going through these, these tipping points. And we all need to, uh, you know, buckle up and be very, very serious and force our governments to, to um, you know, try to learn the math of, of what I was discussing in, in my three previous videos. Because we really need the true numbers and, um, you know, we can, um, you know, we can, we can get through this as, as best as possible. Um, also, I know that um, copper, you know, the, the virus can live for nine days on surfaces. Depends on the type of surface, but I know that copper, um, it doesn't like copper surfaces. Copper, copper, it won't live nine days on copper surfaces. So, you know, we might think of um, coating high traffic surfaces with, you know, just spraying some copper on or, or getting a thin sheet of copper and just adhering it to like elevator buttons and things because you know that would uh, reduce a lot of the uh, problems with that transmission source 
you know, also the ideas of, you know, the masks aren't very effective, people are saying, but, you know, can we design, we need to really put our heads together quickly and try to think of, of simple ways. Like one of the things I was thinking of, because soap is so effective, you know, do you remember the old soap, soap on a rope? Um, there used to be Pope, Pope, Pope on a rope, <laughs> where you can get, um, you know, it's, it's soap on a rope. So you can get some soap on a rope for gyms and things where there's a cord, you know, hole in the soap and you wear it on your wrist or something in the shower. Um, you know, maybe we should be thinking of necklaces with soap attached and that reminds us to wash our hands with the soap and it reminds uh, other people that see us with this to wash their hands. I don't know. I mean, of course, when it's wet, it's going to get all your clothes, uh, you know, messed up. So I don't, you know, maybe have it in a little container, but it needs to you know, have air vents so that it dries out. Um, you know, also, is it possible to use the uh, huge um, virus-killing capabilities of the soap in some sort of respirator or mask? Like, I could, Im I imagine if there's, you know, wet soap on your mask and the, you know, air you're breathing is somehow circ bubbled or percolated through the soap solution, um, with with a, some sort of buffer delay so it's in contact with the soap for 20 seconds and then you breathe that air you know that should be virus clean so you know i immediately start thinking of you know we need to all start thinking of ways of, of that we can um you know get better systems to protect ourselves from from this virus anyway thank you for listening um bye for now